We're live. Yes, we are, and it's May 1st. Yeah, you're not quite, you can um, sit back. We should have our chairs the same, the same level. So I don't look so short. Yeah. People do think I'm pretty short. Well, you kind That's, of are, um, but it's okay. Yeah. I'm, but our, our chairs should be the same height. I'm definitely okay with my shortness. Good. I'm glad I you are. I always have been, so it's I'm never okay been with you. a problem for me. So, um... Yeah, we're going to be talking about, I did a video, um, last week I posted it, and it has like 50,000 views already, and it was a compilation of uh, multiple videos that I did on caulking your tape. And this is that whole um, kind of like mysterious thing um, that we do, some people think it's crazy, some people do it. There's a lot of questions behind the madness How? or the method. So, like, um, and so we're gonna ask, ask or answer questions right here about that. But we'll answer questions about other stuff. My too, question so. is: Is how often do you use it? Is it a method you use daily when you're painting, or is it more rare? On interior painting, every every single day okay. that we're um, painting interiors, we always do that method. So people are starting to pop on. Um, Mighty Doc, I do both, so um, oh. turn your volume down. And oh, okay. so um, you can start watching questions and people having questions about it. To. What up, Paint Life um, from, Gal I can't read, Galt, California. Carlos, what's up? Hey, brother, um, Garcia, like, Kim. Ron Thrall's um, with us um, and Jenny Jutton. Yeah, so we got, uh, let's see, I, Laura Hicks is with us. I painted the banister first week and it was the best finish I've ever gotten. Thanks for the tips, I'm Laura Hicks. So, oh, thank you for sharing. Cool, thanks for sharing that we've helped you out. So we, that's what we're here for. We appreciate that. Well, it's May 1st and for us in Boise, Idaho. Back to work. Um, phasing it in, there's four phases, but phase one is happening today and we just, did a few errands and there was yeah. a lot more cars on the road. Yeah, it was kind of nice having no traffic traveling around. Um, so watching from Texas, Eddie says, um, yeah, now traffic's back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, takes a while to get around town. The lines are showing up again. Um, Muy Garcia, I'm from the best also. Um, DNA paintings hanging out with us. Hey, David. Um, Mario Lopez painting from Southern California since 1980. So oh, that's quite wow. So, so you, if you have if you have any questions about caulking, I know I'm going to hook on to this um, thing and pull it down wire and yank my phone. Don't worry um, about if you have any questions about the whole caulking, caulking the tape method, I'd like to answer them here live instead of trying to you know type a paragraph your question to each you know on YouTube because um, we. Yeah, I get on YouTube and try to answer the questions and stuff like that, but um, unfortunately, a lot of you don't know, um, I have a YouTube channel that has almost 300,000 followers now, an Instagram channel that has um, 152,000 followers, um, Facebook is 250,000. 264,000. 264,000, and of course, along with that comes Pinterest. a whole lot of questions and comments, like thousands, that we have to try to deal with on a daily basis so um you want to help i want to help but it's a little overwhelming but it's cool i'm but, we're here to help but with that let's try to do it live you no know, but yeah but with that a year ago we launched paint life members and paint life mafia and paint life members is awesome because it's you guys that's what we realize is it's community we don't know everything but let's all share so somebody um right here he just said can we run through the messages so mary um, Mary says she's renovating the house and she wants me to run through the method. So let me run through the method real fast. So, and, um, and then I'll run you through why I actually do this. And, and we started um, using this method, uh, I, I would probably say about 15 years ago. And um, I started doing what um, you'll hear some people do is, um, and this is why I tried to come up with a, um, a new solution. And I'll tell you, I, I never learned this from anybody else when I started doing it I thought I created this crazy thing and this was top secret and nobody knew about it and you know through the internet and stuff like that and through um, making videos I learned that I, it wasn't me that invented this well 
I invented it in my own little bubble, in my own little world. But, but there was people also people that were in their own little bubbles that also did the same thing. So I don't know, like time-wise, you know, um, who was first. It doesn't really matter. No. What I did, I just started sharing it. And so um, what I used to do is I would um, say if I wanted to create a stripe on a wall, and this is where I um, started, um, you know, coming across this. I, you, the, and say the wall's white, and you want to create a black stripe. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to mask two lines on the wall, and that's where my stripe is going to go. One line here, and then another line up here, and I'm going to paint my black stripe in the middle. So I would mask, um, paint that off. If you start to just paint your black stripe right there, black paint is going to bleed underneath the tape, because um, naturally the texture has bumps. I mean, even smooth walls, um, there's going to be some type of voids that's going to cause a leakage. Um, you would, it would leak. And so I learned from um, another painter that if you take white and you paint white on the tape, allow that to dry, the white bleeds through, it seals the edge of the tape. Mm -hmm. Then after it dries, say like um, four hours later, come back, paint black, and now it's um, your tape is sealed. What happens is you're going to pull it off, you're going to get some bridging, the paint, the black will mm -hmm. pull off in um, shark's teeth teeth and um, it's bridging and so um, you're gonna have to go back and touch it up sometimes the white wasn't foolproof and it still um, didn't seal it 100% but then to me the biggest issue was is the wait time the lag time you had to now wait for the white paint to dry um, and if you're gonna do this stripe in this bedroom in one day and get out of there and really make money mm -hmm. you can't afford to wait for paint to dry as a professional painter waiting for paint to dry is um, just not efficient. Mm -hmm. It's just not efficient. You're just not making money while the paint is drying. So I decided to test this method of um, taking caulking um, and just smearing caulking on the tape to seal. Because I, I knew the theory was, well, it's sealing the tape. So why not seal it with something else? that I don't necessarily have to allow to dry and I can paint over it right away. So I um, took white caulking, smeared it over there, um, and, and you're just putting a, a small bead of caulking along the edge going, of the tape. You're not going to town. You're not going to town. It's just because you really, you're gonna put this small bead of caulking along the one edge of the tape. You're gonna completely wipe it off and you're not leaving anything behind but what's gone underneath you know, those um, peaks and valleys, so those voids in the tape. Correct, and so, and then you, we would paint over it and then take and pull our tape and voila, you had a perfectly straight line. But it took a while to master this method. So um, one thing was, is we smeared the caulking on, the caulking dried, and then we paint it over because it dries really fast. I mean, like within 15 minutes, it's mm -hmm. dry because you're wiping it all off. And so then this little thin film of caulking, you would pull your tape and it would do the same thing. You'd get these little sharp teeth things that would um, pull off and stuff and you'd have to go back in because um, of the, the caulking bridging from the wall to the tape and the paint bridging from the wall to the tape. Um, it's this phenomenon and it, it peels off unless you score it and it kind of just bridges and peels off and it sharp okay. blah, blah, blah. And so, so, so then I, um, the white, the, I decided, well, now the caulking, it's not on a white wall, it's on a blue wall, the caulking bled through. Now you got white little specks of white caulking. And so I was like, well, let's just try clear caulking. And clear caulking actually dries slower because it doesn't have um, as much solids in it. Uh, and so it dries slower, so it gives you more working time. And eventually what I learned... So is there a certain type of caulking? Like, do you use 100% silicone? No, you, the silicone's not paintable. Okay. So you can't so, use silicone. It has to be okay. a latex caulk. And, um, and we, using this method, 99% of the time we're using a satin paint. Okay. But the, what I eventually learned was the caulking has to be wet. You can't like caulk um, the stripe around an entire room if it's gonna you take you. You work in you, sections. You work in sections. So get the caulking on, it cannot dry. Put your paint on, it cannot dry either. And then pull your tape off. And so, that way you have no bridging. The biggest question we always have is usually you two coat the wall. 
And so do you have to retape and caulk a second time? That's if you're doing like, you're using this method trim. around trim, like doors and stuff like that. No, on your first coat, you always stay away from your trim. On your first coat, you're staying away from your trim, like a quarter of an inch or okay. so, and you're just doing your first coat. Then you go back to do your, um, your cut-ins. So your door jams, your baseboards, and your window trim. And then somebody goes around and does a window, they caulk it, they trim around it, and then somebody paints that wall. And so you're keeping a wet edge the entire time. So and keeping so it wet and doing small sections. A wet edge. Um, if you're if you're in, if you're working as an individual, if I work as an individual, I'm only working two walls. Because that's what she's she wants to know. And yeah, so I work two walls at a time. I wouldn't work an entire room at a time. If I'm in this office right here, there's two of us. We're gonna work the entire room because you can move fast enough with this method that the caulking doesn't dry and the paint doesn't dry. Here's something else. Somebody will always say, "Well, it's gonna crack," and so. Um, and that does happen mm -hmm. if your paint is flat. But here's something we learned, because we I've been using this method, for and we've time. mastered this method for 15 years um, with perfect success, mm -hmm. getting perfectly straight lines. Um, the caulking is latex, it's water-based. The paint is latex, it's water-based. They actually go together. They are not like so um, fighting against each other. So um, the, the paint can go right over the top of the caulking, mm -hmm. Um, and, the, and the caulking can dry. It's just that microscopic thin film. It can dry underneath. The paint can dry over the top and um, you're not gonna have a problem. There's no issues. And the paint, a satin paint, anything, an eggshell um, up in sheen ha creates this flexible film that will not crack as um, you know the caulking underneath dries if you put the caulking on too thick. If you use flat paint and your caulking is too thick underneath, you will get some cracking along your paint because flat paint doesn't have that ability to flex and stretch. It's going to break. And so when we use flat paint, very rarely, but we do, we just know we're gonna to have to go back and touch up some cracking that will occur with flat paint. Now this method, um, we don't paint with oil-based paints ever. So um, I've never even experimented with this method with oil-based mm -hmm. paint. Seems like you could probably have problems, maybe. Well, you can't put oil-based paint over latex caulking. Yeah. So your caulking is going to have to dry. So you, there's, to me, for the, times, the method just doesn't work. So my question is, you say you leave a little bit before painting the trim. Have you ever had a problem not to coating all the way down to the trim? Like showing like a No, so, a um, and that's a good question because sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you're this far away from your tape and stuff. Well, um, like our ceiling cut-ins, people ask us, if you got to two coat your walls, um, we do our ceiling cut-ins first before the first coat mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times. But if you cut in, do your cut-ins right on your ceilings, you don't have to go back and do a second coat on your cut-ins. You will have to go back and just touch up your cut-ins. And so um, I, we just typically go back and check our cut-ins. You gotta get up on a ladder to look at them, but you're gonna have just some light spots here and there. And your cut-in is going this way. When we do our touch-up, we just, hit them um, going um, vertical instead of horizontal. And that's very common just to have a few touch-ups, mm -hmm. uh, light spots on your cut-ins. But, but the cut-ins, um, they can be done first or second, but if you see us doing them you know, first, um, you know, that's why. So it's always best practice to do them second because your second coat is gonna go into your cut-in and it's gonna be keeping a wet edge and it's gonna to gel together and you're less likely to get halo. -y. So that was a long answer and hopefully that wow. answered it. But I just saw that Chris Krager, he said we were supposed to get a mask to him. So the only way I can get when people win is if I get an email with their mailing address and what they won. And last week we had a problem with um, our email address and we figure out a way for people to get us their information. How is that from our store? Um, so the well, Chris, you, have to, you have to go to our store and then there's a little, little icon. What's the store? Um, uh, it's store.theidahopainter.com and there's a little icon down in the bottom that you can communicate with our store with. It actually notifies McKenna who runs our store. You can um, send a message right through there. It goes right to McKenna to say what you want, when you want it, and you would say what your mailing address is. And so that's how you can
communicate. So Chris, so somebody Krieger. says you always have somebody that um, is just so um, just negative, I guess, That's and somebody you says. You know, one cut, one cut is ripping off the customer. I mean, you know what? There, there's, um, we all have our opinions of what's a quality paint job, and you know, that's that person's belief. But you know, that's not true. So you so, can do a really thin, crappy two coats and say, "Well, I two coated it," and you could do yeah. a good one coat and give a better finished product. Yeah. So um, we typically do two coats, but you're. Um, when you roll up to your cut and do we roll up to our ceiling, you know, you're getting about this far from the ceiling. And so, um, you know, um, it's about making happy customers, you know. And doing so, a good, um, using good products. Yeah. And There's always somebody that wants to, you know, fight, you know, the system and fight what, you know, we do our methods and stuff like that. But hey, you know, it works for us and um, it's not ripping off the customer. So definitely not. We would not still be here. Um, this person says, I haven't watched all your videos. Do you have one saying how to proceed methodically in painting a single room when you're alone? I think you do. I do. So um, I have, I have a, a video. Well, I got a video we just did not too long ago, how to paint a bedroom. Um, I, it was three colors and, um, and it was a bedroom about like a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 room and it was me and Lucas I recently just did it and we did three colors and we did a decorative finish and so we painted it three colors and that's the walls um, were one color an accent wall and the ceilings were another color and we did that in one day and then we came back the next day in a couple hours and did the accent wall um, top coat which was a um, metallic suede finish and I walked you know you through that process you know of what it looks like painting a bedroom with two guys and I did explain um, how I would tackle you know that whole scenario um, if I was alone so it's definitely different if you're alone because um, you kind of tackle the room um, you know all together you know it, it one like all four walls at once if you're um, working together but if you're by yourself uh, I have a tendency to just tackle two walls at a time. So, um, real fast, we have Dwayne Perry with us, and he and we have some other Mafia members with us. We did a live show for them earlier today, and we kind of did a little teaser because you were wearing... Were you wearing this shirt? Um, we just talked about this shirt. You were, you're wearing a shirt that is like, oh, paint lazy. And, and we wanted um, people to try and guess what that means, mm -hmm. like what we're trying to promote. What does paint lazy mean? And so we want to hear from you, you guys. And then after we hear some of your comments, Chris is going to share why he is wearing a paint lazy shirt because he's not lazy. So that was a term, um, you know, that we came up with, you know, um, in our painting company to teach new guys with and we were teaching them you know how to paint lazy and so it's just um this term that you know we relayed over to the new guy and um said this is what paint lazy is and how we go about doing it and um can you can you give you're going to be releasing a video series called paint lazy can you give a little bit of information on what that term means to you yeah so paint um in all here, I'll give you an example right now. Um, I like and, examples. And what I call painting lazy. And and so I, um, early in my career, you know, I used to spray a garage door. Um, like we all start off with, we have a gun in our hand and it's just a gun and the tip is right here. And you start spraying the garage door. And, and our natural, a lot of us, our natural tendency is because um, the garage door, a lot of garage doors, they're they're metal, but they look like um like this wood, wood mm -hmm. and the wood grain runs this way, and so we have a tendency to um, just spray with the wood grain because we're taught to sand with the grain and and um, stuff like that, and and then just paint with the grain, and, and just a lot of other things go into that. With but the grain. With the grain, just go with the grain. So I'm going in the the garage door panels are long so i'm just going to walk the garage door and i'm going to paint the garage door okay. and i'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up so i've got to bend over all the way to the ground and i'm walking down bent over all the way and then i'm working my way up walking the garage and back and forth and then i mean she got to reach up here to paint the garage door and i walked into a paint store and this old guy 
he um, was had some gun extensions in his hand and I'm like, you know, what do you use those for? And um, he said, when you get my age, you'll realize, you know, why you should use And you're use getting them. closer to that age. And I'm getting closer to that age. Mm -hmm. And um, and I really, really realize now what he was talking about. But he explained to me, you know, why I use them. And it just, it clicked on me. It just makes a lot of sense. But I was young. Mm -hmm. So I weighed 220. And, um, and I thought I was really fit. I'm like, you know, whatever. It's like. I could walk back and forth. I could walk and back and forth. forth. All day long. All day long. I'm fit. If you think about it, I mean. You know, at the end of the day, I go race my bike. I want to do other things. I want to work out and stuff like that. But it takes its toll on your knees. It takes its toll on your shoulders. Um, it just takes Elbow its toll on your, your neck. neck. So why not put a gun extension on? So now I don't have to bend over to Example, reach down to get the bottom. Lazy. I don't have to reach and on my tippy toes up so high. Mm -hmm. And why not, instead of walking and painting the door with the grain, why not just go vertically? One and trip. One trip down the door. So now I've just walked one time the distance of the door mm -hmm. instead of walking literally probably 10 to 15 times the distance. So if you think about how much walking you'll end up doing, the one door, um, there's a lot of times two garage doors, then you're doing five a week, and then you're doing um, that many weeks, and, and you just think about it. You and do, if the you know, do the math. And just apply that to everything. Why, if you're on an extension ladder, and you just have a gun, and your reach is only this far, yet I can put on a 30-inch extension and reach a whole other 30 inches, that way I don't have to move the ladder as many times because moving the ladder your knees easy. and that's and lazy pay how you to extension is an uh, there's we it's interesting because when we give a new guy the spray gun typically a new guy's gonna have a spray gun in his hands in about we um put a they have a 30 inch extension on they so learn, they learn i'm just a big believer and um because it is more difficult to spray with an extension if you've never sprayed with one and it's more difficult to learn to spray with one than without one. But with some proper teaching, I mean, you're talking, I mean, in an hour, the guy's going to get it. And so um, I, I just, um, that's what's worked for us. And we would typically have a guy in three months um, spraying pretty efficiently on mm -hmm. our team. So paint lazy. Paint lazy. So that will be coming soon. Um, you have this sitting here and that's hitting the stores soon um you started using this tape as a production tape and it just came in this and now all of a sudden this is being released as related to frog tape brand and so um let us know if you've used it used to be called cp199 if you've used it where you're located what you think about it and then why don't you share yeah so um this is it's so it was CP199 inside of it. It did now it has um, the frog tape logo on the paper roll that. inside. Um, it was a it was our go-to production tape, best production tape that I've ever used. And I'll compared tell you, to that beige. Um, compared to um, your standard beige production tapes, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, Sure Tape owns Frog Tape, so and Sure Tape made CP199. They own. Frog tape. So um, here's everybody understands this frog tape. But there's a there's a there's a it's a it's a production tape. It's not like that yeah. tape. So frog tape. Um, this frog tape has a polymer on Magic. the outside of the tape that swells up when liquid hits it. Um, sure tape now is just branded CP199. It's the same. In the frog tape, it's exactly the same. So it's the same. Alan. It's just packaged differently. Yeah. So it even says it's programmed better than bang. It does um, for then years ago than ever used on um, production tape. It would stick to more surfaces, to painted wall surfaces about two hours after we would paint the walls or to release. It says so it comes off in three days. If you try to leave it for more than three days, don't do that. Um, what happens is the adhesive starts to dry, and then you're gonna have problems with the tape. 
is splintering. So uh, most um, production tapes are three-day release tapes. So um, you can't confuse that. Like that's what you start to get into higher tapes. This is a 21-day release tape. So is Frog Tape Blue. So the advantages of do-it-yourselfers that are gonna be painting um, in a bedroom, they're gonna mask it and um, not get done in a week. Uh, you better not be using a production tape because it's going to um, splinter and the adhesive is going to dry. It's going to be a lot harder. So I have one more question and then I have a good question for you from somebody. Um, so Dwayne Perry says they don't carry it. Sherman Williams didn't even know about it when I asked. So it is a regional tape and they are going to be rolling it out, um, rolling it out nationwide. And so um, Dwayne, just go in and ask your store for the Frog Tape Orange and... Um, We'll be talking about it on the Mafia page. But I have, um, Jay says, I have a customer who wants diagonal lines splitting a wall for two colors. Any tips on how to keep, how to tape this and keep it straight? So, um, you know. That's a problem too. Like if you can't do a straight line. Yeah, so um, we're going to, there's different different methods and so back old school old days we would actually chalk a line so we would measure it off um put tick marks where we wanted and we would s snap a line with mm -hmm. um a chalk line okay and so nowadays it's amazing Laser? what lasers will do for you mm -hmm. so um i did a, a line um the last line i did stripe and it was it was in a vaping um facility you know we set up a laser in the middle of the room and the laser is going to cast off the line and then you just walk around the room and just um mask along the laser line and it worked and it worked um amazing so, fast too. and easy and then so you're just going to mask along that laser line then you're just going to use the caulking are those expensive method. like laser lines or chalk lines or what I mean, well, a chalk line is only like five bucks or something okay, like that. So that's, so that's old school. And that um, works? Uh, you, yeah, you you could just do, there's tape measure, and I've done it before, where um, even before a using the chalk lines, just taking a tape measure and um, doing tick marks like six inches apart, and then just following those tick marks wherever I was going. Mm -hmm. And um, you're not going to get like a perfectly straight line doing that method. I'll tell you the laser is, is the way to go. But um, I don't know, the, the person didn't ask of the frog tape. If you do enough bugging Sherman Williams, we found out, I mean, Sherman Williams sells it. It's, um, yeah, if you go in and ask the guy at the desk, um, and, and to say, hey, do you have you know, um, sure tapes, orange tape? If they've never heard of it, um, then they're gonna say no. If you ask them and say, you know, can you look it up through Sure Tape and it's CP199, everybody that's done enough digging with Sherwood Williams, um, they it. eventually found it in their system and were able to get it. So, well, somebody said they're having lag time, and I wouldn't be surprised because we have our youngest at home that is in college still. But she's been home because she's finishing online right now. Yeah, she got booted out of Washington. And so she's on the internet. And then we have our oldest daughter here uh, doing online My phone's school. not on the internet, so it could be their phone. Well, we, we have people issues. here that are using our internet. So yeah, we're sacrificing for quarantine. So we're almost yep, done So any other questions about caulking the tape? I mean, that's what we came on here for. I mean, I kind of so, went through so, the whole thing. So Janelle said, so chalk lines won't bleed through? So no, so there's like chalk. It, it all depends. Um, you're going to snap a line. And so there's going to be chalk, you know, on the wall. But I mean, you're not leaving. There's this fine residue of chalk. Now, if you had pure white tape, that chalk could, or um, paint, it could get mixed in that, um, in the paint and discolor the paint but I, I always I didn't have a lot of, I would empty out the chalk out of the chalk line make sure there's not a lot of chalk in the chalk line itself so when I snapped the line it barely Wasn't left super thick um, yeah I didn't leave a lot of chalk but um, I never did a pure white line on anything mm -hmm. usually there's some type of color you know that you're dealing with and um, and you never see it in the paint so and I did that method quite a few times and yeah pretty... somebody said blue chalk not red and he's had problems with the dust from the chalk box so you mm -hmm. know you just you just it's um, one of those things i mean that was like old school and you mm -hmm. just learn how to um work, you know, around work around and do workarounds but eventually you know as technology got better we 
you didn't have to deal with that kind of stuff. And um, I'll tell you what, a laser level, if you gotta pay, you know, 45 bucks for one, cause they, they are, there's little cheap ones like Bosch has a pretty inexpensive one, but then you can get them all the way up to like a thousand dollars or more. Um, that are spinning and so it all depends on how many lines you're gonna do you can go rent one and, and they're very simple so Brandon use. Mitchell says you can use white chalk I use that sometimes when installing crown molding harder to see but safer than blue or red or pretty much anything else mm -hmm. so we want to hear from you guys like we're here checking in on you guys to see how you're doing with the isolation are you back to work um, how was your April? Like our April was, you know, we worked from home. We did a lot of different things. We were supposed to be doing an academy um, today, but we had to cancel it. And so, you know, we've had some adjustments in our schedule and have had to change um, how we do some things. But you're excited to be doing it exterior probably next week or the following? Um, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's going to be out, out painting, but... He's been waiting to paint, but he hasn't been able to paint. So yeah, it's coming up. So um, somebody said on here, what ladder should I use in a room? So whatever size ladder is going to get you where you need to go the easiest. So um, if I'm working in a room like this with just eight foot ceilings, the lightest, smallest ladder I can get away with. And uh, that way I'm painting lazy and not hauling around something big and heavy. But if I've got to get high ceilings, I'll tell you what, there's, if you gotta do anything that's like above like six feet, um, where you're gonna need an extending ladder, the, um, the extend climb ladder is an amazing ladder. It's three feet high and it'll extend over 24 feet and you just carry it like a briefcase. Absolutely incredible. Um, every do it yourselfer that has, has a home, even single story, two story, because it's the quick and easy way to get on your roof, um, to get in a, um, work yourself in a stairwell, to um, working high um, vaulted ceilings, blah, blah, blah. They're actually amazing ladders. So, so I have a question. Um, somebody asks, any tips on getting rid of ugly paint drip marks on walls or trim after painting? Yeah, so um, getting rid of ugly stuff is not easy. So it's usually sanding. Um, we usually start with, I don't see one in here, a linbite scraper. If you don't have a linbite yeah. scraper, get yourself a linbite scraper because um, any type of paint runs and stuff, it'll shave them off flat like um, lickety split. And so do it yourself for and professional painters. You need to have a linbite scraper. And we, we get those from New Zealand? From, they come from, because we, it's the, we have genuine um, linbite scrapers. Because you've seen other ones so that you didn't really like. No good. Um, yeah, you didn't like the I'll, weight, you didn't like the size, you... Uh, yeah, cheaper metal, um, cheaper quality. So there's a lot of these knockoffs that are not good quality. The Linbide is the best that I've ever used. And we're waiting to get our shipment, so we're currently out of stock. They're out of stock. But how, if somebody wants to get something from our store, isn't there a button they could push and they'll be notified when it's Yeah, so in? now we got a little notify button. If we're out of stock, hit the notify button and you'll be notified when it comes back in stock. You'll get a text message or an email. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yep. It so is, somebody it, says um, rubbing alcohol or paint thinner. So that's where we have the true swipes. Yeah, so the true um, swipes are good. That's, so we would, we would shave it with our Linvite scraper first and then use a true swipe. And a true swipe is like, um, like denatured alcohol with aloe vera in it and you would rub that off. And it's amazing how denatured alcohol with latex paint that's not cured it will rub out a run. So if you get like a run, a run on your trim, um, don't don't panic. It's if you work with it within 24 hours, easy to get rid of using denatured alcohol on a microfiber cloth or using a um, we're, we're we don't have them on our store anymore. The true swipes we used we sold them like crazy, but we don't have any more in stock. They're out of stock too, mm -hmm. and. Um, they're going to be repackaged and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so we actually mm -hmm. took them off of our store because they're repackaging them and everything. So somebody has asked multiple times, how do I get rid of holes in wall? Um, it depends on how big the hole is. So, but you have some videos on this on YouTube, don't you? Yeah, I got videos on how to get rid of small holes and big holes. So if it's a little, like how to properly stack holes. Like, um, you know, cause spackling, you don't want to like the, a lot of do it yourselfers, you know, you got like, um, <laughs> you take um a just a little glove. nail hole. They'll just take a putty knife and do a swipe of putty, um, or spackle right there and then leave it. When you paint the wall, you see this flat spot cause it got rid of your texture. 
And um, so I have, you want to only fill the hole and then, man, you're like sweating. Like, I know, please. Ron just said, how does Lisa manage to get a set job's glow? I am dying man, in here. Like, I know, I am sweat. dying. I got a glow. They can't even tell like how much you're sweating from there. Yeah, Ron can, he just said that. Um, um, yeah, I'm about good to go. I think I'm gonna go jump in our- We're gonna answer some more questions. Um, what are your favorite interior paints? So- um, I am dripping. The my, still, um, I try to paint, so PPG Timeless, I just recently used and I really liked it. Um, there's a lot of things I liked about it. It covered better than any paint that I've ever used, you know, coverage wise. Um, but one of the drawbacks to it was it dripped really bad off my brush. And um, it was taking- Wanted off. to release. It wanted to release bad. Quick release. And it was really annoying, but there was a lot, I liked its, um, I liked its coverage. I liked um, it dried fast so you could recoat fast. Um, I like the sheen of it, the look of it. Um, cashmere all around from Sherry Williams is still the number one paint that I've ever used yeah. in, in Corey tier. said cashmere. Cashmere is um, it's still it's still um, my favorite, absolute favorite. It's still the and um, I would say like out of five stars, cashmere is closer to five stars than any paint I've ever used. The one thing about cashmere, if you haven't used cashmere, there's a learning to it, curve to it. Um, it has a tendency to run on your cut ends. Okay. And so um, you have to you know, paint differently with your cut but ends. But I think that's what's been cool is you've been a lot of, able to try a lot of yeah. different paints and there's still a lot more to try. But yeah. you've always told me you're a professional painter. So you yeah. have to work with it, but then you figure out. And cashmere doesn't like a super stiff brush to do cut in. So if you're using like um, a China Expresso brush, that's not a good brush to cut in cashmere with. Um, I'd want a softer, um, like a Tynex brush. So um, DuPont Tynex, which um, uh, premieres Hampton or um, Tynex Oreo Blend that isn't a super stiff brush. So Hampton um, Premier's Montauk, you know, would be a great brush. So There's Robert wants to know if you use cashmere right on trim. Do you use cashmere on trim? No, no. What, what do you like for trim paint? Does cashmere um, come in? Cashmere is a wall paint. Does it come in gloss or no? Um, you know, that's a good question, but still cashmere, is it doesn't dry hard enough to be um, like an enamel. It's not. It's, it's not durable um, enough for a trim paint. If somebody wanted gloss on a wall. Um, I've never painted gloss on a wall before, but and so I'm not sure if cashmere comes in a gloss or not. Somebody else might be able to. Um, what's up, um, Jensen? Lassie Jensen. So Dwayne says so, cashmere um, dries too fast for him. He likes duration. It's interesting because. Um, from my experience, I thought duration dried faster, but um, it, it that all depends on your own climate and stuff. Mm -hmm. So his climate could be a lot different than my climate here and stuff. Like for us, for me, cashmere has just the right amount of dry time um, for us here. We're a really dry, um, arid climate. Mm -hmm. So um, for walls, um, I, I that like dry, uh, cashmere dries a little bit slower than PBG, but you know, this gets down to making money painting. And if I'm painting this room, just this room, mm -hmm. I need, I need to be in and out of this room in one day. And if I can't two coat in one day, I'm not making money. And so you need a paint that is going to dry, you know, in, um, an hour and a half so you can get the heck out of here, you know, so you can get two coats cause we're always two coating on our walls. Well, and people are asking like, what are your favorite paints? But the whole point of the show is for engagement with you guys. So we really do like to hear what products you like and what you use because, I mean, our platform is education and a lot of the stuff that Chris has learned is from you guys. I mean, a lot of the tools that we're selling on our store is you were introduced to them from you guys. And so, you know, we really like to hear, but somebody wants to know what's your favorite cabinet paint. Do you have one yet? Are you still looking shout out to s b contractors they said they're thankful for our videos learning a lot Thank so you. um so cabinet painting you know i've done a lot of different things from mm -hmm. lacquers um from lacquers to um just standard trim paints for a house to industrial water-based um coatings to you know water-based lacquers and i mean it's a lot of different things and um i say to this day um the, the 
coating that's performed the best for me for cabinets, easiest to use um, when it comes to spraying, um, the ability to get a, um, I'm always looking for an industrial-like finish that looks like the cabinets came out of a factory. And so, um, and then I want something that's, you gotta be able to sand it right away. Um, and then it needs to be low odor so it doesn't blow the customer out of the house and then it has to be safe. So that eliminates lacquers because um, they're flammable. Uh, Renner um, is the best waterborne coating that I've used on cabinets. And um, Renner has a large line of products and I'll say the, um, the product that I use, it's the Italian based coating that I've used uh, multiple products from Renner, but um, in one, the, the best one I've used is Renner 851. And um, Renner USA does not sell it here, but waterbasedfinishes.com mm -hmm. sells Renner 851. And that's an incredible, incredible um, coating for spraying um, cabinets. So he says, um, Benjamin Moore and our emerald um, urethane. Emerald urethane is probably one of the is the best trim paints I've ever sprayed on trim. So, um, but and, I, and Benjamin Moore Advance and um, emerald urethane are great products to paint on cabinets. Back, you know, ten years ago, that's probably what I would have used. Um, there was other products I was using that fall into that same category, but um, I really wanted something. That really stepped up my game. That you know, I want to go to these um, these cabinet um, factories where they're manufacturing these cabinets, these they're and they're using. coming out um, with these industrial finishes. And you go, I mean, that looks like it came off this crazy assembly line that not a human did it, but it was an amazing coating. And um, Renner is one of those coatings that's used in these large factories producing, you know, um, finishes for these large companies like REI and not REI. Um, Ikea and stuff like that, these big furniture companies. So Carmela was saying that the coronavirus has changed, you know, how they do their customers and they're focusing on exteriors and power washing. So one thing that, you know, let us know, like, have you changed how you're going to do your business? Is anybody um, spraying disinfectants? Because that's an area that I think is going to be, if you're willing to, you know, you get, got the, the get the product, you have the equipment. If you're willing to do a little bit of marketing, I don't think that's going to go away. The grocery stores are going to want their carts sprayed. They're going to want, want their entrance sprayed. I mean, I think that it's a good opportunity um, to get business and yeah. to grow your company. Is anybody doing that? I've seen different videos. Titan has put out some information that I thought was really cool. I saw on Instagram of, you know, converting their sprayers or using your sprayers to spray disinfectants. So let us know if anybody's going into that business. Somebody said um, just recently, a question flew by, said, what's the best scraper? Um, the Linby scraper is the best scraper I've ever used. So mm -hmm. um, it's small, goes in your pocket. You don't have to, like the bigger scrapers with the knob and all that stuff, they're great and everything, but you just can't carry it around your pocket. The Linby, right with your five and one, two tools that every painter should have. Titan sprayers all day, somebody says. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of the Titan 440 because this is this big, the first sprayer I ever had. I think, um, yeah. I mean, I think so. we are very thankful. I mean, you, when you started the business, you had a wife and three children and you needed to pay the bills in that little machine. The Titan 440i was um, in my recent video that I just did because um, people, a lot of people ask me, well, what sprayer should I buy? And so I, I wanted to show the very, because it, it still runs. The very first spray I ever bought 19 years ago still runs and still paints. Um, and so obviously I'm a big fan of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so for a small pump, to me, I mean, my opinion might be biased because it just worked for me. It made me tons of money for three years. I did interior painting, exterior painting, new construction, residential and commercial with that pump for three years. That's all we used. We had no other pump, one pump, and it was a workhorse. And so, so it, it just worked great. And then I wanted to just compare that with other Titan pumps, you know, in that same line. So the Titan 440 Impact Assignment. 
and 410. So um, maybe some people thought I was a little bit biased, but my recommendation was just a Titan 440 is what if you want to start off with something, that's what worked for me. Um, that doesn't mean there is no other there's spares a lot of, there's out there. There's a lot there. of good spares um, out there. They're great. I mean, Graco makes a great 395. Um, it's Tritech makes a great um, T5, um, great sprayer. I've got both of those and um, they work for me. And um, I just go back to, you know, what, you know, got my business going, what still runs now, uh, Titan 440i. They don't sell the high no more. The 410 is the closest to that. So do you know the house that you're going to be painting in the upcoming week? How many colors are on it? Do you have any idea? I believe there's four. So how many sprayers will you be using on that house? Uh, there'll be four. There'll be four sprayers out. So, so for every color, that, there's a sprayer. Do you do that to speed it up? I do that. So, um, and that was a long time ago. In order to what I realized, in order to make money painting, um, you need to have the tools to make money. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you gotta make an Invest. investment. Mm -hmm. If you have one sprayer, you're loading up and cleaning sprayers all day long to paint those. And typically, most houses are four to five colors for us, and so you're spending. A lot of just downtime and then what happens if you spray the gable clean it up and then go start spraying the body and down the road when you're doing you know some painting Attention. you realize your gable um, has light spots and you need to respray it now you got to reload up clean that reload up that and then reshoot it it's always nice just to have the sprayers loaded up throughout the day and you're painting long you're like oh a spot was missed here there and you can just hit it with the sprayer again or respray it. Um, good example, um, you go, you get to the job, you should be spraying the door, front door first, um, that way it can dry so you can hang it at the end of the day. So you spray the front door, clean your sprayer up, now you go spray the body of the house, but a bug just landed on your front door, walked across your front door, now you gotta sand his um, footprints off and you gotta respray the door. You have experience so in that, it sounds like. Um, I probably had um, bug, that I had to bondo and sand out of doors probably 20 to 30 times in my career. A little bug. A beetle, um, a gnat. Um, we had, in, this is one of my, in one of my hack videos, um, keeping a pair of tweezers in your pocket when you're spraying. Or I always carried a tool bag because mm -hmm. if the bug lands on there, before, while it's wet, before he you know travels across your door and leaves his little <laughs> footprints. Because as the paint dries, the footprints get worse and worse. And they, if you grab him with a pair of tweezers quickly, the paint will fill it in, gel out, and the bug doesn't ruin um, the paint job. So, so bugs can bug you. Yeah, and then like a leaf or um, cottonwood trees, you just um, spray your door. Cottonwood tree, a little bit of wind blows, cottonwood. So another hat, spray the door out in the sun. Get the door warm in the sun, spray it, let it start to flash dry, real, in which happens really quick. Lift the door up, carry it in the garage, close the garage door, and now it's protected. But here's another hack. Don't put the door underneath the garage door because as the garage door opener is closing, yes. Um, specks of stuff fall off the garage door, on the door, voila, you gotta respray it. So set it behind the garage door. Yes, so um, Ron had asked, Laura had asked about um, if Renner had a primer at, as well. Yes, yeah, so they do. So um, 851 is a self priming um, and it can be catalyzed. Um, so I would always, for my cabinets, I would always add a catalyst to it. Um, but then um, it can be catalyzed and, um, now I just forgot the term, um, I'll think of it in a minute, um, but, but it is a self-priming coating and it can go on bare wood. Mm -hmm. They have a, I, I believe it's 1064, but I'm probably wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the number. They have a good support. So um, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a filling primer, so if we had oak and we wanted to fill oak wood grain, we would use that primer to fill the oak wood grain before we would actually paint our cabinets. But we're gonna be sanding our cabinets, so I'm gonna be using an Unita sander with um, Eka Silk sanding pad. I'm gonna sand it, a three by four with sponge pads, so you're gonna get a good mechanical bond. Um, but then even my test, um, cross hatch test with 851 over a catalyzed lacquer um, cabinet um, it it succeeded in a crosshatch test and um, it is a self-priming coating but um, I'm you so you want to 
get a good mechanical bond um, and then spray 851 and we would do, uh, we had good success, two coats of 851 on a color change. So Carmelo said we have exteriors to do, but we're focusing on sanitizing patios, playgrounds for kids, furniture, power washing with special That's products, great. safe for people, plants and pets. So how is it going? Is it hard to get business? Are you advertising? Um, share what you're doing because I think every community needs needs that so this was Every a talking to tape video and i don't know um thank you so much for your information yeah. as i'm a self-taught painter um yvonne Givens. so cool thank you very much for um the thanks we appreciate it biggest ladder biggest ladder yeah what's your biggest ladder you have um, we, we always have we a 30 foot ladder um we always have a 30 foot ladder and i've had to rent um a ladder bigger than that before mm -hmm. and i'll tell you that's scary so um it's, it's, what's interesting is I'm a painter, but I'm afraid of heights. So, but um, you didn't let your fear stop you. No, I, I still had to get on 30 foot ladders and still did some things that scared the living crap out of me. But you, you know, did it. Career. I was always afraid to be on lifts and I still did it. And I've been on um, an lifts 80 foot lift. That drove away while you were on it? We were on the a lift. I'll tell the story. Um, so not a lot of people heard this story, but. John and I were working um, in McCall on an apartment complex and we were, I believe, on a 60 foot lift and um, we had that lift fully extended. And before we got on the lift, we were having problems with the lift um, functioning. Pro tip, if stuff. you're having problems, um, don't go up. But there was only one lift in town. Okay. And, um, so we Pro had tip. that lift and we had to get this project done. There was certain reasons. Um, John was always like the master at operating lifts and stuff. He was really good at it. And so um, we got up there, got to the top, and the thing was very finicky and stuff. And we were um, on a slope, and the lake was at the bottom of the slope. And it was only, we're talking maybe 25 yards. And, um, and you know, in a little bit of breeze, when you got that thing fully extended, we're really trying, I'm like reaching out as trying to get where I'm trying to go. And um, John was trying to manipulate the lift, and all of a sudden the lift started driving on its own. And, um, and it was driving to the 60 lake. 60 feet in the air. And I, I don't, it was probably one of the most scariest times ever in my entire life. And I remember, I mean, I remember seeing John, and he always gave me a lot of comfort on the lift because he'd been like driving lifts since he was like a little kid. Uh -huh. And so he was in the steel industry and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I looked at John, like, what are you doing? Like you're driving to the lake. I mean, we, what, we get to go swimming. And he had, he was like a ghost. He was terrified and fully panicked. And he was trying to get the lift to stop and the lift would not stop. And it's like bouncing, like, like driving to the lake. And I was holding on to that thing and thinking, um, I was literally going, I'm going to have to jump. And, um, That's not you know, right? and I was like, okay, when it hits the water, I'll at least be able to jump into the water to stop the impact. And um, it never like got to the water, um, but uh, it was so, so scary. And I, I remember um, getting him finally getting the lift down and I called the lift company because we'd already called them multiple times that day saying there's problems with the lift yeah. and they didn't like believe Something. me. And I can't tell you, I can't say, what I said on the phone. That's good. Don't but say. I said, come get your lift and um, this thing's going to kill somebody. And they got it and sent it out to the next job mm -hmm. site and never did anything about it. So. so Mark May says, I've been painting on my own recently after 12 years as a youth pastor in Indiana. I have sincerely appreciated your video. It seems to me like you are a great mentor to your crew. Well, thank you. That's awesome. Um, you know, we, we hear a lot of stories, you know, where people, we've helped a lot of people out and that's what we're here for. It was because you didn't have anybody to teach you. And so you learned the hard long way. And so your goal is now to help people with yeah, that learning yeah. curve. Yeah, I think I like probably had an understanding of what it was like to be the apprentice, but then I had an understanding what it's like to be an owner that isn't know, of a painting company that doesn't know how to paint. And then I have the understanding of being a journeyman painter trying to teach an apprentice painter, but then also um, a halfway in between painter being fired by the new construction, um, you know, guy, the, the, the builder, because mm -hmm. I, you know, wasn't good enough yet. And so I went through all those trials and tribulations mm -hmm. and I, I gained this person perspective this inside and outside perspective of all different ways so a lot of people don't know but um 
I never worked for anybody else. I never worked for another painter. I started a painting company and had no experience painting mm -hmm. at all. And so um, that can be terrifying. It wasn't terrifying to me because again, I grew up in the construction trades. Um, I was a good artist. I painted um, oil paintings. You had some um, confidence. I had some confidence. Um, you know, I, Maybe a little too much for... <laughs> probably too much um, because I started spraying and trim the very first day. Yeah. Um, I started painting the first house I painted. You know, I sprayed the trim package on it with a 517 tip. Um, and so, because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but, you know, um, I well, I wanted to work for myself and um, start my own company. And so that's but, what I did. But what's really cool is I'm seeing people in here that are like connecting, like saying, oh, I live in Canada or I live in Indiana. And so that, I mean, that's what we want to support and be about if the community. So if you are not um, a Paint Life member, it's the private group on Facebook. It's free. Um, you should join it. And if you have questions, you can ask them there and you'll get tons of advice. And if you want to help others, it's a place that you can help others. And so, you know, Paint Life members on Facebook, you just have to answer like, I won't bully and give your email. And then you get into the group and um, that could be the community that you can support and be with. You know, and if you, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, you know, subscribe to our channel. And what's interesting is um, you can subscribe to the channel and this weird thing with YouTube, if you subscribe, it, does not, it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. If you hit the little notification bell next to it, so you subscribe, hit the notification bell, it allows YouTube to just send you an email every time I come out with a new video. So, um, and, and it's just an email. You can delete the email, but you know, it's just, um, it's just a way that, um, you know, helps my channel. It's beneficial to, um, uh, my channel and, um, and, and it's beneficial to you because you just get notified when I come out with a new video. So, um, if you, if you're, if you're watching this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And like I always say, it's free and easy to do. It doesn't cost you anything. So it's so, one way you can help support us is so, just doing that but, small gesture. But Ron so Paul, something pink on yes, there. Yes, I'm going to read it to you. So what right now we were supposed to have our academy and we would have been able to meet like Jake Baird. He was scheduled to come and we had to cancel it because of everything going on. And one thing about having academies is we get to meet fellow tr tradesmen, fellow painter and Ron Thrall, like we got to meet him twice. Ron's he, an amazing dude. He is. And um, he just gave $50. Thank you very much, Ron. So I can't even read it because I'll start crying. But um, that's that's what this is about, is this community. And so um, I want to thank you guys for being with us. And it just encourage, you know, if you have a question, ask it. And if you have an answer, answer it. Because Chris knows a lot. He does. I'm married to him. I could say that he knows a lot, and but he doesn't know everything. I know. I know some about working out. Um, so I've been doing that for a long time. So, mm -hmm. um, do we have anything to give away to some of these people that have been um, hanging out with us for quite a while? Yeah. So let me read Unfor this real fast. Unfortunately, if you're not um, on with us live, you can't win anything. So if you watch this after it's live, so will you my can't win. five fifteen and three eleven tip work good enough to achieve great results? They're not. The FFLV ones, they're the ones used with orange mm -hmm. court guard. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and so I'll tell you, I, I use the 515 tip. That's probably an extremely versatile tip. I mean, mm -hmm. if I could only have one tip, it would probably be a 515 tip and um, not an FFLP tip, a regular standard um, high production tip um, or production tip. That's the red tip from um, Titan. Now, a 311, um, the fine finish tips are um, the, the even numbers. So a 310 is really a fine finish tip. Um, a 311 is going to give you the same width and pattern and stuff, but it's not um, classified as a fine finish tip. But it's, it's a great versatile tip. And so if I was going to paint cabinets, I'd want a, it's, so the orifice is a little bit bigger and it's going to put out a little bit more paint, but the, the, um, even numbers are like classified as a fine finish tip, but, um, a three, three eleven five fifteen is uh, two great tips to have. If I had, um, 
Only two tips I could have. I'd want a 515 and 310, or 310. If I could only have two tips, I'd want a 510 production and um, 310, um, 310 fine finish. I just made, I made a video not too long ago, less than a year ago, maybe six months ago, about, um, I think it was like the five tips I recommended. And if I would have a 515, a 310 fine finish, and then I would jump to probably like a 619 HEA, because that would be great for spraying ceilings. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, um, you know, and then there's a lot of other things it's good for. But a 515 is what we spray all the exterior, the bodies of our houses with. Um, I spray garage doors with it. I spray door, I spray every every door, but a front door with it. I'm gonna spray a front door, I'm gonna spray with a 310. Mm -hmm. um, I would use a 311 um, on exterior paints. Um, you're gonna get a great finish on that. Um, you know, so I think if I want a little bit better atomization, smaller droplets, so I'm going to use a 310 on my cabinets or a trim pack, but you can get a great finish with a 311 on a trim, trim pack. So Jared says, how long have you been painting houses? Have you ever painted condos or, or mansions? I mean, I've painted like some of everything. So we've painted condos, apartment complexes. So I, I've done... Um, my main, um, the main thing that our we bread and butter. do is residential repaints is our mm -hmm. bread and butter. So interior and exterior residential repaints, but, um, like I said, I've done, um, multi-million dollar homes. Um, I've done epoxy floors, I've done, um, fences, I've done decorative coatings, Venetian plasters, um, uh, metallic finishes. Um, so I've done, um, commercial offices, I've done dentist offices. I think there, and you, I did Fred Myers, we painted Fred Myers here. It's a grocery store. A you grocery may not store. know about it. Um, yeah. Anything else I painted? Like, um, I don't know. I can't remember. I can give you some stuff to paint. Well, I know you can. <laughs> so, um, OCD, FP, FPV. I bought a Titan Caps Ray 115 because of you. My first cabinet job came out beautifully. Thanks. Cool. Um, that's awesome. Have you used a Caps Ray a lot? Um, the caps the caps ray one fifteen I used it for years. Um, incredible machine. Um, if you're gonna buy, you know, uh, HVLP for um, spraying cabinets, you cannot go wrong with the Titan cap spray one fifteen with a um, maximum elite gun. Um, so that's the combination, and I think the cap the in um, the Titan cap spray um, comes with the maximum elite gun. The cap spray one fifteen. You now can buy them on. PaintLifePro.com, Titan, on um, the cap spray sprayers and four four. And tips. Line of spray, and you can buy tips. So you know um, what? They were gonna give one more gift card away. PaintLifePro.com. We can give one a gift card away right PaintLifePro now. PaintLifePro.com. So you we pick somebody to give that away to. We'll give some a couple other things away here. So somebody asked me, um, how much do I charge per square foot? So right now the going who, rate. Um, who knows what it is now? Uh, well, yeah, after COVID, um, oh, I, I would jump right out regional. right now, and I'm gonna probably say a dollar sixty-five to a dollar seventy-five a square foot is gonna be. Um, the starting um, price, that's gonna give me my direction. Um, I'm probably not gonna go down, but I could go up from there based on some factors, and I have a video on that. So OCDFPV, he did buy the cap spray from paintlifepro.com. Cool. Oh. So why don't we give you a $25 gift card to use at their store? How would he get his information to us? So because go um go to our store um, not paintlifepro.com go to my store which is um store.theidahopainter.com down on the right hand side there's a little um like a help me icon um just click on that and just a um, message just say um, I won mess uh, McKenna monitors that mm -hmm. and just say I won what you want and then your address and McKenna will verify that that's true. And then email um, address. She will, um, yeah, because we could e email you the yes. um, gift card. So we got, what else um, we got? To, we get, do we have any Titan shirts and tips to give away? We have, um, so Titan, you know, they want to spread cheer and um, give back. And so they gave us, we have like three tips and then we have, I think three medium shirts left. Is and anybody so, a medium shirt out there? Yeah, so that's what we have left. This is it. 
I think we need to give these out, and then we got to get going. It's Friday night. Yeah, it's Friday night. Um, got to get go out into the gym and work out. I got to go do my workout. But um, Premier, so Premier Brush Company said that they wanted to um, be part of Painter's Care, and um, we can give out a brush. I just put this one back together. So I'm doing a video on what goes into making a um, good brush and why you should buy a $25 brush versus a $5 brush. Me and so uh, um, I've learned a whole lot about um, filaments and um, there's a whole lot to learn about filaments and um, abrasives and sandpaper that I'm doing a video on too. But you know, this is um, the inner workings of a um, premier Montauk right here. And so one of my favorite brushes for doing interiors. So um, that video is gonna come out, but maybe we can give out a couple Montauks right now. We'll so, out. so our mafia, Chris had asked them, and so there's a bunch of people that I owe paint brushes to, yeah, and she, just gave six she, of them out. she requested that I don't give away any more things until we send everything out. Uh -oh. So, so maybe I'll have to do it. Hopefully, she's not watching this video. Yeah, I'll have to do it without her. So why don't she's out I think out I think what we need to do is anybody who is a size medium, we have three size medium Titan shirts. We will, here you wanna show them? Who, who's a medium wants a medium? Who's a medium? Believe it or not, I wear a medium. I'm short, I'm a small guy. So um, first... Do you use different gun filters based on paint and tips? So, you know what's interesting? In eight, 18 years, uh, my 18 year career, um, the gun filter I always used was a 100 mesh gun filter. I never changed it. So this person, I would remove the gun filter if I was spraying like block filler and stuff like that, but I never um, changed my gun can filter. Can you say that name? I can't read it because my eyes are bad because I'm getting old. Chemtrails? Um, is that? That's Chemtrails. Chemtrails 509132. Like chemical trails, chemtrails. So chemtrails, say one more time, go to store.theidahopainter.com and- The only way we can get you your shirt and um, is, your Titan tip is, is to go to store. You have to go there. Store.theidahopainter.com. Click on the little help button down on the bottom. That allows you to um, message McKenna, say, hey, McKenna. Send this me my Titan shirt and this is my mailing address. Yep. So the next person is Jared Recor. I am so horrible. Jared, Jared, Jared Recor. So same thing with you, Jared. You're going to get a medium shirt. And, and, and then Carmelo Lopez, you're the third winner for her son. So there you go. You just um, hooked your son up with... Um, you can always get um, my Paint Lazy shirt that I designed. So those three people, you have to go to store.theidahopainter.com, say I won the Titan Medium shirt, this is my mailing address, and I will get it sent off to you before McKenna knows I did more giveaways. Uh oh. Because she's our boss now. Yeah, and then, um, so those were the, did you give anything else? Oh, you gave one of the Paint, paint Life Pro. So there was, there was one more person, um, so Jared got it, Carmelo, Carmelo got it. Yep, they all got it. No, I think we're good, and I think we gotta get going. So uh, we were gonna give a paintbrush away. Oh, okay. To help out Painters Care, if you don't know what Painters Care is, hashtag Painters Care. Um, all the proceeds that we um, make, all the money we make from the shirts and stickers from Painters Care is gonna go to charity, so. And you um, already created the stickers and the shirts. We the have them in stock. The stickers and the shirts are available at our store. They are pretty cool. So um, there you go. So any- I, I think we're done. We just said we were giving away. No, you, okay. So Corey Monfi, he just said, congratulations guys. So since he was a, Corey Modfi, you need to go to store.theidahopainter.com and you need to message saying, I won a Premier brush. So Matthew Vargas said he bought our hose whip and he said, what a game changer. So that's cool. That is awesome. Thank so our green you. hose whips are just, it's the hose whip that I went to the manufacturer. I said, this is what I was looking for in a hose whip and um, got my own hose whip made in my own color, lime green. Yep. So, um, to my specifications so there you go um, thank you everybody for being with us we're gonna get going it's um friday nights and um we haven't been out for yeah
Uh, tomorrow's uh -huh. video, I got a hack video coming uh -huh. out with some pretty cool hacks. And believe it or not, there's been a set of your finger, and I tried it. And you're going to be amazed at the result smoothing out your coffee with ice cubes. Uh -huh. Um, that's, that's stay true. tuned for that hack. And if you have kids like mine or a wife like mine, that every time you get money in your wallet, they know it's there. Um, well, I'm going to do one thing real fast. El Salvador kept asking about painting a boat. We haven't painted boats, so it, we wouldn't be good at recommending product. I would hop on Paint Life members on Facebook and get boat painters out there that, I mean, there's thousands of products out there we've we've learned this from going to shows and so um join on paint life members on facebook and ask but thank you thank you very much ron for the super chat um the yeah. amazing guy so let us know how the purdy backpack you know works for you too ron won a purdy backpack from us so um cool um we're gonna sign out yes. i'm gonna hit the i'm gonna give you a close look at my face while i reach up here and hit the Close out button. Lisa's good night. Lisa got her workout. Oh my um, gosh, she's would you stop? Sweated. Oh my gosh. Um, here so we go. Let's see. Are you sure you want to stop streaming? Yes. And yes, I'm sure. I'm gonna end it right now. Lisa is sitting in a 